This short presentation introduces the concept of stress testing using components from the corresponding e-learning module found under Optimal MRM's online training service. Stress scenario risk measurement generally applies to the main categories of risk which include market, credit, operational, banking book interest rate risk, and liquidity. Market stress scenario risk measurement has traditionally focused largely on traded capital market risk and partly on non-traded treasury risk largely focused on banking interest rate risk. Changes in fair value accounting standards have broadened the scope of risk measurement to banking treasury centers, pension funds, and insurance companies. Credit stress scenario risk measurement can be applied to traded credit and non-traded activities which include loans and collateral from either traded or non-traded credit risk exposure. Operational stress scenario risk measurement includes anti-money laundering and other similar qualitative risk exposure. Liquidity stress scenario risk measurement includes market liquidity, the ability to exit positions in the market, and funding liquidity, the ability to meet liability commitments. Treasury stress scenario risk measurement generally focuses on lending or bank institutions and includes non-traded banking book interest rate risk and asset or loan securitization. Insurance stress scenario risk measurement generally includes insurance-related or actuarial risks such as mortality, morbidity, and reinsurance. Pension fund stress scenario risk measurement generally includes market, credit, operational, and liquidity, and specific pension beneficiary-related actuarial risks such as longevity, disability, and demographics. Market participants may have been lulled into a false sense of confidence in measures such as VAR. VAR is silent on the potential loss against market moves that exceed two to three standard deviations, which is typical of stressed markets. VAR implicitly assumes that historical risk factor volatility and correlation remain constant over time, which is typically not the case under stressed market conditions. A given risk factor's move expressed in standard deviation terms under normal distribution assumptions can be shown as a more practical probability expression. In the normal world, a one standard deviation change in a given risk factor has approximately a 16% chance of occurring on any given day. A 2.33 standard deviation change, which was the general benchmark used to measure 99% VAR, has a 1% probability or is expected to occur on average once every 100 days. According to the normal distribution, market risk factors have close to a zero chance of changing in value by more than four standard deviations on any given day. During the stock market downturns of 1929, 1987, and 2008, the one-day drop in the S&P 500 exceeded six and a half standard deviations. These events should have been nearly impossible according to normal distribution assumptions. Looking at similar events across different risk factors strongly suggests that risk factor changes tend to be distributed in a manner that is anything but normal in the real world. The sophistication of practice varies widely across organizations. The focus of senior executives and boards has largely been on developing an expression of risk appetite in a manner that has been disconnected from stress scenario risk measurement. Organizations are mired in legacy stress scenarios that have been disconnected from realistic volatility conditions. Organizations are gradually investing in robust stress scenario design and infrastructure as a prudent management approach and to satisfy emerging regulatory requirements following the 2007 global financial crisis. A statistical stress risk measurement approach is used to illustrate the process of constructing stress scenarios and using them to measure portfolio stress scenario risk. The daily volatility of individual risk factors are calculated from historical price and yield information using either the standard deviation method or the more responsive exponentially weighted moving average or EWMA. The volatility multiplier is then applied for an appropriate stress confidence level such as 99.95%. A more precise approach is to analyze kurtosis historically in order to estimate an appropriate multiplier for each risk factor. 
The liquidity factor is further applied as a function of the extent to which associated market positions would be difficult to unwind or exit in a stressed market environment. The percentage stress shock is then calculated as a function of the one-day volatility times an appropriate confidence multiplier such as 6.5 multiplied by the square root of the liquidity multiplier. With the stress shocks by risk factor in place, we can next set out to construct stress scenarios based on expectations for each risk factor or asset class. Portfolio positions are subjected to each stress scenario to determine how the portfolio's fair value is expected to change. The most precise but time-consuming way to measure the change in portfolio fair value is to reprice individual positions. An alternative approach is to use the portfolio's risk sensitivity such as delta, gamma, and vega across all risk factors using the Taylor series expansion to estimate portfolio profit or loss. Optimal MRM invites you to visit its store online to learn more about this and other available market risk e-learning modules.